it's another wonderful day in pre AP chemistry at Bryan High School, so we're going to talk about the effect of nuclear charge, the shielding effect, and the atomic radius. We'll even throw in the ionic radius, um, and it's going to be awesome. So uh, we want uh, really just to understand the terms effect of nuclear charge um, and uh, the shielding effect. Um, and then at the end, we'll do some practice problems where we're uh, ranking them by smallest to largest atomic radius, and we'll also do ionic radius. Forgot to leave that up. The effective nuclear charge is the positive charge that is felt by the electron. Uh, that's the best way I can like describe that to you. Is uh, it's what an electron feels essentially. <laughs> um, how the attract the negative charge of the electron is going to be attracted to the positive charge in the nucleus. So it's going to get um, they're going to be attracted and it's one get going to get want to get closer and closer to the nucleus. Now there's a couple things wrong, um, up with this. Well, will this electron attract to the nucleus as much as this electron? Okay, we'll get into that. Um, is there does it depend on the energy levels? Well, does it depend on how many electrons are in the outside? Well, it depends on all those things. Uh, so we'll uh, check that out. So with lithium, right here, uh, it experiences, an, let's say, a positive charge of three, 3 right here. So it's got an effective nuclear charge of positive 3. Um, it doesn't really have a number, but let's say positive 3. Uh, beryllium's got positive 4, boron's positive 5, and carbon positive 6. Okay, so as we add more protons, um, there is um, more, um, the electrons are going to feel more uh, tightly bound to the nucleus. Okay, uh, there are, if, if you add more protons, you will also add more electrons. The electrons will attract uh, to the nucleus more. Okay, so that leads up to something in a second. So the trend across the period is as we go from left to right, now this is lithium, beryllium, boron, and carbon. That's uh, so elements number three, four, five, and six. So we're going left to right on the periodic table. Um, it will increase from left to right. Make sure you've got that uh, squared away and written down somewhere. Now, um, for the trend, uh, the reason for that is because we're increasing the atomic number, and so we're in, um, increasing the number of protons. The shielding effect is that the electrons on the inner energy levels will shield the outer electrons, okay? Um, and um, on the uh, outer electrons on the outer energy level from feeling the full effect of the nuclear charge. So essentially the core electrons are going to shield the valence electrons. Uh, let's take a look at some and we're going to look at some in a group now. So we're going to start with hydrogen and then lithium, sodium, and potassium. So uh, the, this hydrogen has no core electrons so it, this electron is going to feel a great uh, attraction to the nucleus as you, as you might see. But as we get to this part right here, where um, this valence electron, remember the green ones are the valence electrons, the one on the outside, they are, uh, it's going to attract a little bit less because it has some core electrons that are shielding it. The sodium electron has two energy, full energy levels, or two core, elect two sets of core electrons that are going to shield it, and potassium has even more. So we're not even done going down the group uh, yet, and you can see the uh, atom is getting much larger, we're adding more energy levels, and so there's much and much more shielding. So as we go down a group, the trend will decrease um, uh, for the effect of nuclear charge because of the shielding effect, okay? So the, the electrons, um, this electron does not feel as uh, attracted to the nucleus as this electron here, um, even though they all have only one valence electron. This electron only uh, feels a lot, um, feels a higher effective nuclear charge.
this is the best way to explain shielding. So here is the nucleus right here. And uh, here are your core electrons and you're at a rock concert, right? And you are a valence electron and you're standing in the back and you're saying, hey, I can't see or I can't hear the group. Uh, that's because you uh, are shielded by the core electrons. So the effect of nuclear charge in this analogy would be the uh, sight that you see, uh, that you're trying to see, or you're also maybe the sound from the band. Okay, so uh, the electrons want to get as close to the band as possible, or close to the nucleus as possible, um, but they can be blocked by full groups or full, full rows ahead of them. So I think that's a good analogy. So uh, just looking at it on the periodic table, this is the best way to take a look at it. Um, the effect of nuclear charge, um, it increases um, from left to right, and then it from top to bottom, it will actually decrease. Now the reason of this is because of the shielding, shielding effect. Okay. So now let's think about it here. Um, what about the shielding effect going left to right? Well, there is no shielding going left to right because the, the, well, the shielding doesn't matter because uh, you're there. This, if you look, say in the third row, uh, this row right here all has the same number of core electrons. So you're not adding a full row of seats if you go back to that rock star analogy. So you're, uh, yeah. You're going to get. Uh, you're, you're not going to get any change in the shielding. Uh, which elements, valence electrons, experience the greatest effective nuclear charge? Uh, that is probably going to be helium. Okay, uh, so it's that guy up there. It has the greatest effective nuclear charge because um, it has two electrons. It has uh, two protons, but it has the least amount of shielding. Now, uh, which elements valence electrons experience the weakest effective nuclear charge? That is going to be francium. So it's that guy down there. So you'll notice the two opposite points right here, and this will be a common theme moving on when we get to atomic radius. So if you've been following what I just did, then atomic radius should be very easy for you to understand because it's very much on the same lines. Uh, atomic radius is defined as one half of the distance between the two nuclei of identical atoms. The reason why we do two atoms is because one atom would just be too difficult. We um, can't really tell where this electron is. Remember that un Heisenberg uncertainty principle? Uh, so the uh, electron is just kind of exists in this cloud here. However, we can tell where the nucleus is, and we can tell where another nucleus is. So we're going to take the distance between the two, and we're going to cut it in half. And we're going to say that's the atomic radius. That's how we do that. So that's easy for elements like hydrogen, or oxygen, or fluorine, because hydrogen is H2. Um, oxygen is O2. Fluorine is F2. So there's two atoms there. For metals, you can do that very easily because the metal cations bond um, in a, that way. Uh, for nonmetals, it's a little weird, and you have to be creative about it. And um, for noble gases, you also have to be super creative. But uh, it's a way we can uh, figure that out. So as you see on this picture here, you'll see that the largest element is uh, down here in the bottom left, and the tiniest element is in the top right. Well. Does that have anything to do with what we were talking about before? Absolutely. So um, going across a period from left to right, lithium is, uh, and we're increasing the, nu the effect of nuclear charge from here to here. So um, the atomic radius will actually decrease from left to right. That's because we are increasing the effect of nuclear charge the electrons are pulling closer and closer to the nucleus so they're feeling more and more attracted so the um, electron cloud will get smaller and smaller and smaller okay as we go from left to right now as we go down a group 
as you could probably tell from this picture, it increases from top to bottom. That is because essentially we were adding more energy levels. Okay, we're, um, so we're adding more shells of electrons. Now, uh, which element has the largest atomic radius? Well, that is, uh, here's, your, here's your arrows right here. Um, this guy over in the top right is uh, Bam Bam, remember from the Flintstones? And then down on the bottom left is uh, Big Francis. All right, so I, uh, that's what I like to call her. Uh, Francium is Big Francis. So that would be Francium. Okay? Big Francis. And then um, the smallest atomic element is going to be helium. Okay? Pretty, uh, pretty simple. Straightforward. So um, now you'll have to get in um, some, some groups. Uh, you'll have to, you'll get a group of elements and you'll have to uh, identify which one's the largest, which one's the smallest, and you will probably have to rank them. Okay, so now let's go ahead and practice that. So let's just rank two of them. If we have phosphorus or sulfur, let's check out phosphorus and sulfur here. Which one will be the larger of the two? That's going to be the one closest to francium, essentially. So that's going to be phosphorus. Um, checking out boron or aluminum. That's these two. Well, that one's going to be aluminum. Again, closest to francium. Uh, neon, I'm sorry, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, or sulfur. I get these four. Well, that's probably going to be phosphorus. That is the largest. And then rubidium or cesium? Cesium. Sodium or potassium? Potassium. Okay. Lithium, beryllium, sodium, or magnesium? Ooh. It's going to be sodium. Okie dokie. All right. So now let's see and let's really try to identify what an ion is. Okay. So I got this question on units before and I'm not sure I totally covered exactly what an ion is. So let's make sure we understand what it is. Um, so an ion is an atom or a group of atoms containing some type of charge. So it has a charge. It is either positive or it is negative. Okay. So. Um, and we'll get to this when we get to ionic bonding. But uh, there is a positive charge here. That means it has lost two electrons. It has lost two negative charges. And so uh, that means it is a positive two charge. This has gained a negative charge. So it is a negative one charge. Okay. Hopefully we're sure we're okay on that. You will have to know what a cation and an anion is. A cation is positive and an anion is negative. The way we remember that is that a cat has paws, so a cation is positive. Okay? A cat has paws, so a cation is positive. Good. And we think negatively of ants. I guess you could think about that. So a cation is a positive ion form with a, when an atom, uh, which usually is metal, uh, loses an electron. So essentially we get a sodium and we get Na+. Plus. And an electron leaves. Okay, and this is ionization. Um, so it loses one electron. Um, a positive two means it loses two electrons. And then a positive three means it loses three electrons. Now. As it loses electrons, you can see this picture, in this picture, it will actually get smaller. So the more positive it gets, the smaller it gets. Remember that, write that down. The more positive it gets, the smaller it gets. All right, and an anion is a negative ion uh, formed when an atom, uh, usually a nonmetal, gains an electron. So what we do is the electron is added, Okay, 
and what happens is the electrons this extra electron will repel off the other electrons and so the cloud will get poof, much bigger okay and so we get a much bigger anion uh, yeah anion here and so negative one gains one electron negative two gains two electrons negative three gains three electrons and so forth um, now so as you gain electrons you will get larger okay so going back to this the reason why um, didn't actually give a good reason why this happens. As we lose electrons here, uh, there is more positive charges in the nucleus. So that means that um, the electrons are going to attract, and they're going to have more effective nuclear charge. So they're going to attract even more. And that's why the, new, the uh, cation is going to be much smaller. Uh, that's exactly what's going on here. So that's, I forgot to mention that. Sorry. Okay, so uh, you see these pictures here. Um, you see the parent ion right here, or the parent atom, uh, which has no charge. The ones in yellow are the what we would call the parents, and then the ones in blue are what we would call the daughters, or the daughter and uh, cat ion. And essentially, they've um, these are the these are the ions here. Uh, it's a positive one positive 2 and positive 3 because this is group 1, group 2, group 3. It's nice how that works out. So, uh, and you'll see that the positive ones are smaller than their parents. And then the negative ones are larger than their parents. Okay. Alright, and you see negative 3, negative 2, negative 1 in these groups. Okay, so check for understanding. This is really easy, I promise. Um, the element uh, or ion with the smallest radius is going to be the most positive one. The smallest one is the most positive. So which one is it? Oxygen or oxygen 2 minus? Oxygen. What about sodium or sodium plus? It's going to be sodium plus. And then hydrogen minus or hydrogen plus? It's going to be hydrogen plus. Copper 1 plus or copper 2 plus? Copper 2 plus. Uh, nitrogen 2 minus or nitrogen 3 minus? 2 minus. Aha. It's the most positive one. So even if they're both negative, it's still the most positive one. Everybody got that? All right. And then barium 2 plus and then barium. And this is... Uh, the most positive one. So checking it out. Challenge question. Rank the following elements in order of decreasing atomic radius. This is something you will have to do. You have magnesium, cesium, rubidium, sodium, sulfur, and aluminum. Now this is atomic radius. Not ionic radius. This is atomic radius. Maybe you want to pause and try yours again. But the first one is going to be cesium. Okay? It is the one closest to francium. And the next one is rubidium. And then sodium. And then magnesium, aluminum, and sulfur. Okay? Now, if we did ionic radius, it would be a little different. Okay? Because um, sulfur would be the largest ion. We're going to practice a little bit and I want not going to explain the answers I just want you to pause the video and check them out and um, that's gonna be it I want y'all to have a great day